Good morning, church. Good morning. Um, I'm glad to be here. It's an honor to be here. Um, I thank God for this church. I always like to tell y'all, maybe y'all don't know what you guys have, but hopefully you do. Um, to be part of the at least RCCG system and have a church like this is pretty unique. So you got to be grateful to the Lord. And I thank God for the leadership of this church, um, your pastor or the leader or the person who's preaching the most. Um, I, uh, you guys know him as uh, Pastor Joel, Brother Joel. I, I, I call him Daddy Joe, all right? Daddy Joe. And uh, I thank God for his life. A lot of the things that, um, a lot of things that I've come into, uh, Brother Joel, Pastor Joel, Daddy Joe, he's, he was there before I got there. Um, because some of the light that we came into, he had already seen that before us. Um, and um, I, I'll never forget, and my time ain't started yet, all right? So y'all chillax. Um, I'll never forget, there was one time I was driving, Brother Joel calls me, and then, and this is what you need in your life, by the way, brethren, brethren, okay? People that will call you about the things of God. Um, not the latest this or the latest that. I mean, that's kind of cool, but when do you fellowship about the word? He calls me, and, and he says, hey, bro, do you realize the golden heaven is under our feet? And I had heard a man of God that I highly respect say that. And I know Daddy Joe doesn't know this man of God. I'm like, man, uh-uh. I didn't get that one. I thought this daddy got that from heaven. But it was, I was like, wow, this brother saw that. I had never seen it until I heard it. But then when he said it too, I said, bro, where'd you get that from? He said, no, I was, just, I was just reading and it just hit me. I was like, wow, praise God. I mean, that's, that's uh, it's things like that, that I've, I've seen that um, he, he already had understanding of. And God has helped us to fellowship with each other and help each other grow. In many ways, the Bible says that we know in part. So there's parts that you don't know that your brother or your sister knows. There's part that you know that they don't know. All right. So we're all here to help each other. There's no sizing up. Um, we have to humble ourselves and somebody knows a little bit more and somebody challenges you. Um, take, take that challenge in a godly way. Right. Don't don't hate because you ain't got it like that. Um, it helps you grow. OK, so I have so much to say concerning this uh, topic. Um, there were so many things that didn't want me to be here on today. Um, but I was like, nah, I, I got to be here. And fortunately and unfortunately for you guys, I am timed, okay? Um, so I'm going to keep to my time as a godly man, all right? So let's get into it. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord. As we uh, get into your word, we're praying that your word will get into us. Let it go deep in our hearts. Let it bear fruit. Uh, let it take root. Let it bear fruit, Lord. And please, Father, we pray that the fruit will remain. In Jesus' name, amen. We're talking about the gospel. That's why I had to be here. If it was something else, I mean, here, don't, don't hit me up, bro. But we're talking about the gospel. I was like, man, this is, this is vital. This is important. This is stuff that people overlook um, coming into the faith because you think there's other things that are more important. But sometimes when we use this word gospel, it's like, what are we even talking about, right? It can mean so many things. So we want to kind of dive in a little bit. And I want us to understand some. The gospel is pretty, quote unquote, simple to understand. OK, it's pretty easy. Right. Um, just like I could tell you the gospel in two to three minutes. And then you got it. You're like, oh, that's it. OK, cool. I'd have to keep coming to church then if I already got the gospel. It's kind of like I could teach you how to uh, play soccer in three to five minutes. Kick the ball like this. Try to make it in that goal. These are the lines. Don't go past the line and uh, don't kick anybody in the leg. That's pretty much the whole sport. I mean, unless there's something else y'all want to tell me. But it's kicking a ball, trying to get in the net, don't let somebody else get it, and don't injure them. Simple. But are you an expert at that sport? Does that sport pay you? Is that where you derive your living from? No, it's not. Even basketball, I could show you the sport pretty quickly. But yet still, you won't be a professional at that sport. Even professionals at the sport, before the game begins, you see them still shooting around. Still dri doing dribbling drills. It's like, bro, you already know how to dribble. Why do you keep on? Because they're chasing perfection. They're not perfect yet. They're trying to get there. They will probably never get there. But the journey is getting there. So when we're talking about the gospel, you could get it real simple, but you still don't know anything yet. There's still much more to know. Like, 
there's so much more that you're like, wait, huh? I didn't know. It's just like soccer, kick the ball, kick the ball. Then you see somebody doing tricks. You're like, oh, I didn't know somebody could do that with the ball. I didn't know somebody could bicycle kick. I didn't know you could windmill. I thought it just, there's so much more than it's just, just the basics. So when we look at the word of God, there's so much more. In the word, don't be going looking for stuff outside of word for so much more. In the word is so much more. So we're going to talk about the gospel with the time that I have. So let's start off in the beginning, right? Simple things. You guys already know this. Most people know it, all right? Most people know Genesis 1, the Bible says that what? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now there's some dis disputes here because the next verse tells you the earth was formless, void and darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was moving over the surface of the water. By the way, I use NASB, New American Standard Version, um, if, if you guys care to uh, uh, know that. But every version is going to pretty much tell you the same thing unless it's the message. You ain't going to get a message from there or you go on passion. That has an, that's another passion. Okay, so between one and two, some people think, you know, the, the, the gap theory that something happened there, right? Because in the beginning, God made the heavens and the earth and then now you're seeing that the earth is f formless shapeless, void, darkness, how God going to make heaven and earth and then it's like that? Oh, something must have happened. Because the Bible never tells us the time period, like the specific time when Satan fell. So some people kind of insert that, oh, this probably when, you know, the devil was cast out of heaven and then, you know, he came down to earth and then, you know, everything got messed up and then God started. It is, that's a conversation for another day. Maybe you guys can have a Bible study on a gap theory, okay? But that's not what we're getting to. The Bible says that the earth was formless, void, and what's that next word? Darkness. Was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters. Then what happened? Verse 3 says what? Then God said, let there be what? Light. And there was light. This light. Coming in introduces the work of God. God starts working when what happens? When the light comes on. We start working when? When the light comes on. Why are you going to be doing work in the dark? It's kind of weird. You turn the light on. What's the first thing you do when you walk into a building? You look for the light. Like, where's the light? Because normally we don't work in darkness. God said, let, let, let there be light, and there was light. And that's when God began to work. This is very important when we're talking about the gospel. So God's word brought forth light, and God began to work. Then God made everything, you know, at the end of it, you know, the Bible says that God saw that everything was what? What was it when he made it? It was good. And at the end, it was what? Very good. It was good, it was good, it was good, it was good, it was good. Then it was very good. What was the last thing God made? Humans. The most complex, beautiful thing that he made, us. Made us last. And then he said, very good. Then he gave us some instructions. And obviously, you know, we disobeyed. Genesis 3, the fall happens. God had told them in Genesis 2 that, hey, don't eat of the tree, because if you eat of that tree, what's going to happen? You will what? Die. When, if, you, if you watch boxing, or some people watch UFC, or now they have uh, bare knuckles. I don't know what else they're going to have, headbutt club or something. But it's just getting, you know what I'm talking Now they got the slap club. You just stand there and slap each other. Some of our fathers should enter that, you know what I'm talking about? Some of our fathers should enter that. They might answer to be slapping. You're answering because they will be slapped. Like, Dad, you should go, Dad. It'll be good for you. But when somebody gets slapped and they fall down, people say they got what? Knocked out, right? What happens when you get knocked out? What do you see? Darkness. They, somebody said it's these stars. Well, you see stars when? In darkness. So, yeah, almost there. Pash out points. But it's dark. 
When you go to sleep, close your eyes. It's dark. God says, the day you eat of it, you will what? Die. I already turned the light on, and I put in work. If y'all eat of that tree, the light's coming off. You will die. So don't do that. Good? That's what's up. Then, obviously, the father of darkness, in a sense, comes in and says, hey, you're not really going to die. Lights are not going to really be cut off. God knows you'll be like him. Adam and Eve, they eat the fruit. Then their eyes were open. But what has happened? This, 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 if you understand just the first 11 chapters of Genesis, really just the first even three chapters, you, just, you, you could understand why life is the way that it is. God says the day you eat of it, you're going to die. When somebody gets knocked out, when they die, their eyes closed. They're now in what? Darkness. But what happened to them? The Bible says now their eyes were what? Opened. But yet still now there's darkness now. And what we have done, what we have done, right, is we've made, because, you know, God made us in his own image, right? And, and that's still complex. Like, what, is, what does that really mean? In his own likeness. Well, I was looking into that. What does that really mean? Okay. But, but we know we have some features of God. We know we're not God. You're not a God. Nor can you call anything into existence. You ain't got it like that. Okay. You can't speak anything to existence either. All you can do is motivate yourself. So anybody telling you, oh, I spoke this into it. No, you didn't. You didn't. I'm going to lose weight. And then you lost the weight. I spoke it into No, you motivated yourself by continuously saying that. Then you got your butt in the gym. Speaking into existence is, I'm going to lose weight. Boom. You ain't got, who, who has it like that? Nobody. You're not God. But we have some features, some likeness. It's like, okay. And, and we have made lights, street lights. You go to Vegas, it's nighttime. But is it really nighttime? There's so many lights that we think we're in the light. But it doesn't matter how many street lights are on, night is still night. But we have been able to work in the night. So we don't call it night. We don't call it darkness. But it is what it is. Nighttime is what still? Nighttime. Turn on all the lights. It's still what? Night. Adam and Eve, the lights are off, but their eyes are now opened. But there's now darkness upon the earth. They can't see that because they've come up with their own version, their own standard of good and evil. That's what the devil wants. You guys come up with it. You make the standard of what right and wrong is. That's why we can't fall into that trap as children of God. It's like, okay, that sounds good. But wait a minute. Does the word of God have something to say concerning this? Because the word of God is our standard, not ourselves. We don't know that although our eyes are open, we are blind to our condition. I'm talking about the gospel. So we see that light came and God started working on this world that was shapeless, uh, void, and darkness was upon it. Light came and God started working, 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 working. And at the end, the Bible says that after God finished from all his work, what did he do? He rested. He rested. But Adam and Eve sinned and now that darkness came back. And Jesus comes, the word of God says that God said, let there be light. The Bible says the entrance of your word gives light. The Bible then says that the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. It's interesting. When the Bible says the word of, it, ah, I'm going to try to just not open too many doors here because I'll enter every door and we'll be here for two hours. So let's not do that. But when the Bible says the word of God, which is Jesus Christ, remember, in Philippians 2, it says that although he existed in the form of God, what form of God did he exist in? As the word of God before he came. That's the form. Okay? He wasn't sitting on the throne from eternity. He was the word of God. Then the word became flesh. Okay? So now the word of God comes down. And when he does... What, 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 what significant thing happens? If you look at Matthew 2, we can't open all these scriptures because I, I, I'm not going to do that to myself. Um, but you see that these magis or the wise men, what do they see in the sky? 
they saw some type of light marking the, 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 the incarnation or the presence of Christ. And that light led them to him, okay? Now, also, you can see that light is a picture of the law. Now, you ain't supposed to be worshiping the star now, right? That star is supposed to lead you to the one who worshiped. So that, I'm, I can't do it. But Galatians 3 talks about this, what the law did. It brought us to him, okay? We don't worship the law because you can't be saved by the law. But that law, it, it, it should, if, you, if you follow it correctly, it should lead you right to him. So when, when, when God's word came again, you remember the earth was messed up, God fixed it, then he made some people, and they was goodies, but then now they messed it up. So now what is God doing? Jesus comes later saying, my father is at work till now, so I work. Like, wait, I thought the Bible says that God rested. Yeah, but then Adam and Eve messed up. So now God is doing what? He's back at work. What is God back at work doing? Some people came to Jesus and said, Jesus, what, 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 what should we do to do the works of God? What is God doing? What is God working on? Jesus said, this is the work of God, that you believe on him who he sent. Wait, that's what God is doing? Yes. God is at work for you to believe on the one whom he sent. God is at work for you to see the light. So the Bible says that the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. So that light came. In, 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 uh, there's another scripture that talks about this, if you want to just uh, write it down. Um, ah, I think it's in Matthew Oh, uh, yeah, Matthew 4, 13, talks about the people of Zebulun and, and Naphtali have seen a great light. I remember reading that. It was like, this, he did this to fulfill what was written. I was like, so wait, him walking by, that's supposed to be fulfilling something that these people have seen a great light? That's it? This carpenter guy? Yes. That's the great light. And if you see that light, what does that mean? God is at work. God is doing something now. Because when God first turned the light on, he started working and fixing stuff. And we're all messed up. So God sent that light so that he can work and start fixing stuff because he's making everything again. But now he's starting with those who mess things up. Okay? At first, he, he, he did the, you know, heavens and earth and the waters and the sea and um, animals and the trees. And then he made man. But now he's starting off with man. So the light came on so he could start that work with man. And hopefully he's working in your life. Because the way that we are, we can't go into that new heaven and new earth because we're going to mess it up again. So he's got to make a new. That's why the Bible says that if any man be in Christ, he's what? A new creature. Like you new, bro. You ought to be new. He's made you new. Old things have passed away. Your mindset is different. So. That light is now coming to the world. John 3, popular verse. John 3, 16, but we're going we're gonna to jump ahead. John 3, 16, so that y'all don't think I'm just coming up with stuff. But I'm trying not to open every verse because I, I, do the, I have a bad habit of like start, now what does this mean and what does that mean? So I don't want to do that. Um, but, 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 but before we even read this, if you guys remember... In Egypt, right, God caused a great darkness to come upon the land. And there's a way that is worded, I think in the New King, New King James or King James, it says that, that the darkness could even be felt. That's how dark it was. There was no street lights going, nothing. That, it was so dark, nothing was going to penetrate that darkness. Well, the children of God, that was light. But that darkness could be felt. What has happened now with our street lights, with everything we got, we can't feel darkness. That's not dark. It's light. What are you talking about? It's dark. What are you talking about? It's nighttime, bro. Look how bright it is. This is man made. Man made brightness. This did not come from above. No, that's the daytime. And you know what the children, you know what the Bible calls us? We are children of the day, not children of the night. Not coming up with our own standard of what's bright and what's not. And we got to stray away from that. I wish the world can feel 
the darkness. And that's why when we give the gospel, we must let them feel the darkness. Because if not, they'll just be like, okay, I see what you mean. Let me tag a little Jesus onto my life too, you know. Yeah, God really just wants me to, God, everybody throws God into everything. Throws God. It's like, what do, you, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by God this and God that and God this and God? Everybody wants God in their life to, 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 to champion their life. Like, go with what I want to go with, God. No, that's not. We submit to his plans, not we submit our plans to him and say, hey, you better mark off on it. So, so when we give the gospel, have they felt the darkness? And they know that they need light. Let me not do that. Okay. John 3, verse 19. Ah, 18. He who believes in him is not judged. He who does not believe has been judged already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. This is the judgment that the light. So what's the judgment? The light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light, for their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come to the light for the fear that his deeds will be exposed. When we see these things, oh, evil, you know, people who do evil, they don't like the light. You think about people who are terrible citizens that go to jail. Nah, everybody knows that. What is evil? Oh, there's a scripture that talks about if somebody doesn't bring the doctrines of Christ, stay away from such a person. And if you, if, you don't stay, if you don't stay away from them, you share in his evil. You're sharing in his evil deeds. It's like, what do you do that's evil? He didn't bring the doctrines of Christ. That's what's evil. What's sin? Sleeping around, watching things you ain't supposed to watch, stealing, lying, cheating. Nah. Even worldly people understand you shouldn't be doing that. They actually lock you up if you keep doing it. Sin is, the Bible says in 1 John 3, sin is lawlessness. What, what lawlessness? What are you talking about lawlessness? Lawlessness is a, 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 um, a disregard of the law. What law are we talking about? God's law. That's why you could be a good citizen and still be a sinner. Because you have a disregard for God's law, for God's standard, for God's ways. But that's why you could be a quote-unquote struggling Christian and be perfect in the sight of God. Because you don't have a disregard for God's law. When, when somebody brings God's law to you, you bow down. When somebody brings the word, you bow down. When people saw Jesus and they were humble, they bow, They said, I'm not, why are you here? I, I don't deserve you. It's, get away from me. They humbled themselves before the living word of God. That's somebody whose heart's being worked on, who's being converted. So when somebody brings the word of God to you, if you got a spirit of, look, man, hey, bro, don't judge me, bro. Ain't nobody perfect, bro. I never said that I was per. Uh, you are living in sin. You are a child of disobedience. You have a disregard for God's law because it's being brought. First of all, you should have already known it. Nobody should have to come teach you necessarily, especially the basics. But now somebody brings it to your remembrance. You talking? You having that type of attitude? <laughs> I uh, I hope your heart will change. Because that is a demonic attitude to the word of God. So don't just think broad things, oh, people, they hide because their deeds are evil. What, what do we mean by that? You could, find, you could find good citizens, our version of good, that when you give them the word of God, they hide. They don't want it. Why? Because their deeds are evil. What do we mean? They don't want to hear God's word. That's the evil. Not that they've never killed anybody. They're nicer than, than you. They're better than you. But yet still they are evil because they have not submitted themselves to the light. The gospel is what? Because the other day I was thinking about, you know, some Bibles, they have it like, you know, the gospel of John, the gospel of Mark, the gospel of, hey, it's hit me. You know, gospel of Mark. What do you mean? Because gospel is the good news, a good message. No, it's the gospel of Jesus. Jesus is the gospel. Jesus is the good news of God. Yeah, some people, Bibles have it, the gospel according to Mark. Yeah, according to Mark, this is what happened. So, so when we look at those four gospels, think about it. It's like the four gospels. What, is the whole, what are the books about? 
Everybody knows about Jesus here and there. Where did you get your knowledge about Jesus from? Majority of people is from what? The Gospels. So then what is the Gospel? It's the good news about this one man. That's what the Gospel is. It's the good news about Jesus Christ. And it's watered down if you don't understand the bad news. If you haven't felt the darkness, you don't treasure the light. It's just another light. It's nighttime, the light's on, and you turn on another light. Does anybody even notice? But let there be pitch darkness. Then you treasure the light. You know, a normal human being in their normal state, you celebrate the light. Some of y'all might, well, ask your parents. They might understand. Because back where most of them came from, the lights just go off whenever. Somebody just playing with the light switch. You know how kids just be playing with the light switch? There's some kids somewhere in the office just playing with the light switch of the nation. <laughs> just turn it off. You just turn it back on whenever. Do you understand that when that light comes back on, people celebrate? Hey, up Nepa! What y'all celebrating? You had a kid? No, the light. <laughs> what, 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 what? Oh, what? Oh, okay. They, they, at least they got the light on. So, 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 people celebrate. Like, look at these kids, they eat ice cream. They happy. When the light comes back on, it's like, ice cream is here. It's like, yeah. You're celebrating because you're probably not doing something evil. Because when that light comes on, if you're doing something evil, you're, you're not going to be celebrating. It exposes you. That's why people don't like the gospel. Okay. So let's look at, we're going to jump at, whew, we're going to jump at three scriptures real quick. I think I've kind of laid some level of a foundation for everything that you guys could build on yourselves. Mark 1, verse 14. Mark 1, 14. I'm going to jump at these three. Mark 1, 14. Now, after John had been taken into custody, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of God. The good news of God. I'm back at work, y'all. Yay! Daddy's back at work. If the kids knew how life was with daddy not being at work, you know, we're broke, we can't eat nothing, life is doo-doo. And daddy says, you know what, fine. I'm going back to work. Man, the kids are like, yes, money is coming. God says, hey, y'all, I'm back at work. This is the gospel of God. Mark 1, verse 14. This is the good news of God. And saying, the time has been fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the good news of God. What is the good news of God? Who is the good news of God? This man, Christ Jesus. That's the good news of God. And it's through him. You know, the Bible says that in the be, uh, John 1, right? Uh, in, the be, in the beginning was the word. The word was of God and the word was God. And the same was the beginning of God. All things are made through him. Without him, nothing was made. In him was light, and that light was the light of men. That's light. The light has come. The light has come. We celebrate. <sighs> Another scripture, Romans 1, 16. It's a popular verse. But I want y'all to just see something. I don't know if I've said this over here, but I want to just point something out real quick, and then we're going to jump to our last scripture, and we call it a morning. Okay? Romans 1.16. So, let me not go there. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. Oh, my. You know, time fails me, or I fail time. Which one is it? The Bible says that the gospel was preached to Abraham. You know, it was, it was, some, it was it some weeks back, some months back that that hit me. I was like, man, that's what I'm t telling y'all, that you could learn what the gospel is. You know, Jesus Christ, you know, he came and died for our sins, John 3, 16, boom, boom, boom. But you don't know anything. When, I, when that hit me, when that scripture hit me, like, wait, the gospel was preached to Abraham? How? What do you mean? I thought Jesus, what, what, whoa, way back then? How is that? That's another day. Uh, Daddy Joel, you come there. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. 
For it is the power of God. For what? Mark that. The gospel is what? The power of God for what? To everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Ooh, verse 17 is another thing, Ting, that we're not even going to look at. But that's, that's major right there. There's even deeper, even deeper understanding on verse 17. But let's just stay at 16. The Bible says that the gospel is the power of God for what? Unto salvation. Look, we can, oh, glory be. You guys are people of the kingdom. Glory be. We can, we can, we can, um, oh, Lord help me. What was I going to say? We can experience the power of God. And you think, because you experience the power of God, you're good with God. No. You can be healed. You can get a breakthrough. Some miracle can happen. And then you think, well, God must love me, because look at me. Everybody else didn't get it, but I got it. I'm special. No, you're not. Only special people receive salvation. You can experience the power of God to heal your body, to give you some type of breakthrough for some miraculous thing to happen, but that's not the gospel. It's not. You could even say God, in a sense, ah, let me leave that. But the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. That's the power of God you want to experience. Unto salvation. To save me from what? What am I doing wrong? Right? Like one of the presidents said, they asked him, are you a Christian? He said, yeah. He said, have you ever asked for forgiveness? He said, for what? You said you were a Christian. <laughs> Did you ever ask for forgiveness? He said, for what? I haven't done anything bad. And I don't blame the guy. He didn't get the gospel. He probably been going to a church, but they don't understand the gospel. They just throw the word out there. Nobody has broken it down. He hasn't felt the darkness. He's rich enough, successful enough that he can make as many likes as he wants. But yet still he is in darkness. Night is darkness. Doesn't matter how many likes you turn on. So he said, for what? He hasn't understood. So what are we being saved from? My guy, you are born with a disobedient spirit to the word of God. That's what you're being saved from. Not the sexual sin, not the drugs, not the alcohol, not your potty mouth, not this and that. That's great. But the world also gets saved from that too. They go to the mosque and their lives change. Their marriages change. They, they start treating their body better. Are they saved? But it's like, but wait, uh, so she's not drinking? She's still a virgin? Uh, she, 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 oh, she's saved. What do you mean? Is that the gospel? What does she say from? She still, wait, is, does she believe that Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life, that no one comes to the Father except through him? Does she believe that she is a sinner, that she's headed to hell unless she turns and believes in this good news of the one who's the only way, the truth? Nah, she don't believe that. Then she's not saved. Although she's changed her habits concerning certain things. That's not what we're talking about. That's not the good news. Because we need God to come down and get beat up and all this other stuff to do that. People have been doing that and meditating and learning how to control their bodies and all that stuff. That's not what we're talking about. It's deeper than that. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation to save you from this disobedient spirit to the word of God. That's what it's saving you from. And guess what, brethren? When you have an obedient heart, obedient spirit to the word of God, you will have dominion over all those sins. Simple. It's easy peasy. You will because you're subject to the word of God. You're humbling yourself to the word of God. And the Bible says that God gives grace to the humble. You ain't even got to fast and pray about grace. He going to humble you. Fast and pray about being humble. Because when you are, this is what happens. He gives grace to the humble. The Bible says, submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. And he's going to do what? Flee. Many prayer meetings were saying, Father, let the devil flee from me. No, 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 no. That's not the prayer point. It told you, submit yourself to God. It told you, resist the devil. You ain't got to tell him to flee. It says he's going to do that already if you do this and this. 
We just like to, you know what I'm talking When I used to play basketball, I didn't know I was doing this. Ball's coming down the court. I'm talking to my team. Hey, man, y'all make, the ball's coming this way. I'm supposed to be guarding the ball, but I'm telling them what to do. Guard the ball first. Do your part, my guy. And if, you, if you're such a great example, that people will learn, hey, man, let's hustle, man. Chose us, hustle, man. But I'm too busy until the coach, until we watch film. Coach showed me, look, this is what you're doing. I said, yeah. Why do I have my box on when the guy's coming down the court? Do your part. Believe the gospel. Humble yourself. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. And lastly, lastly, oh me. Uh, 1 Corinthians, you can't, you can't um, really talk about the gospel unless you look at 1 Corinthians 15. Basic things, very simple. 1 Corinthians 15, and we're done, did he? Okay, 1 Corinthians 15, and thank you for the extra little time. Thank you, yes, thank you. Now I make known to you, brethren, 1 Corinthians 15, 1. The gospel, or let's say the good news, which I preached to you, which also you received, one, in which you stand, two, by which you also are saved, three. But you're not balanced yet. If you hold fast the word which I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. So what does it mean to believe in vain? You ain't holding fast to the word. I, I, you received the word. You stood in the word. You, you felt like you were saved, but are you holding fast? It's just like, yeah, I learned how to play soccer. Bro, do you practice anymore? No, bro, I already learned. Bro, Joe showed me like it was like three to five minutes that he showed me real quick. But you're not about that life? It doesn't sustain your life? That's what these professionals have done. They've given up so much of their life to this sport that now it sustains their life. Let the word of God be that. Let the gospel be that. That, yo, I can't stop. This is what sustains my life. How can I just give up? Athletes give up because of their age. They old now. Their body ain't the same. But we, biblically speaking, we go from what? Glory to glory. So we should never give up. Because this is what sustains our life. So you need to hold fast. And if you don't, then you believe in vain. Verse 3. For I delivered to you as first importance what I also received. What would you receive? That Christ died for our sins? How? According to the scripture. So important, brethren. That's another day. And he was buried and that he was raised on the third day. How? According to the scriptures. Where do we find this, this whole story? In the four gospels. That is the gospel of Christ, death, burial, and resurrection. Without that, you don't have anything. So now you got to go deeper into, wait, why did he die? Why did he have to get buried? Who cares if he got back up? Why is that important? You see, now we're digging deeper into the, we're still in the gospel, but we're digging deeper. And this is how our lives are sustained. This is how we have a joy of the Lord, regardless of what's going on. This is how you can, you can have a peace of the Lord, regardless of your circumstance. That the world is in a state of darkness. They've invented their own version of light. It's not from above. But God has gone back to work. He sent his light into the world. Now you got to examine, is this light in my life? Or am I still hiding in darkness because my deeds are evil? When somebody brings this light into my life through the message, through a, 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 a link, a sermon link, or a song, or a conversation, what is my response to the light? You got to examine. Don't fool yourself. Because the Bible says many will be what? Deceived. So I want us to check our hearts. If this light is shining bright in our lives, if it's guiding our path, the Bible says that the people who live in darkness, they don't know what they will stumble over. There's little kids who like to play in darkness. They think it's fun. You turn the light off, the kids start screaming, ah, start running around. But when you've been through a few things in your life, you know what I'm talking about, as an older person, the light come on, you ain't moving. Because you're like, hold on, I'm not, my knees ain't even that held. I'm, my ankle kind of, I don't want to move in darkness. But as I said, the world has come up with their version of light, and now they move in darkness. So they don't see the need for the light because they got the light. That's why we must, by the grace of God, help them to feel the darkness 
break down what sin is. No one can escape when it's broken down. If you just do a surface stuff, you know, you sleeping around, you know, listening to bad music and stuff like that. I'm like, come on. There's a bunch of people who are not doing that. When you break down what the scripture tells you sin is, 1 John 3, it's lawlessness. A disregard for God's laws, for God's word. That's sin. So it doesn't matter how good this person in front of you is, they can still be on their way to hell because they have not submitted to the word of God. And you might struggle with this or that, but brother, don't worry about that because my time is up. Have you submitted yourself to the word of God? Once you do that, he will lift you up. I want us to pray. Ask the Lord to help you. And Lord, I want you to lift me up. You started fixing the world when you turned the light on. Then Adam and Eve messed up. Oh, man. Then you sent your light into the world. And you started working on men. You said, this is the work of God, that they believe on the one whom you sent. Lord, please help me to believe on this one whom you sent. Let my life be transformed. Let me live off of this gospel. Let it sustain my life. Let it not just be a part-time thing. You know, I kind of learned it real quick and I'm done. But let it be a daily practice. These basketball players are doing drills and shooting around every day. They're looking for greatness. But their bodies are going to fail them. Brethren, if we keep searching the word of God, we're only going from glory to glory. From light to light, from fate to fate. Say, Lord, let this be my passion. Let me yearn for your word. Let me yearn for prayer. Let me yearn for a deeper fellowship in you. Let's wrap up our prayers by thanking God for a quick opportunity to say, Abba, Father. It's a privilege, it's an honor. Oh Lord, we thank you. We are not worthy of you. Oh, what a privilege it is to be counted worthy by you. Thank you for sending your son into the darkness of our lives and turning the light on. And you began to work. You, you began to work. Lord, please let that be evident in our lives. Your word says, for it is God who works in you. How is God going to work in us, brethren? Do we have the light? The light of his word in our lives. That's how God works. Through his word, by his word, he sent his word. And his word was working. Everywhere he went, he was doing good. Lord, please help us to have your word in our lives, that your word will be at work in our lives, that we'll humble ourselves before your word, O Lord, that we will pursue your word, that we would uh, 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 submit ourselves to you, O Lord, that our lives will be transformed from the innermost being, from that disobedient spirit, disobedient mindset towards your word. Lord, transform us. That your word will be yes and amen in our lives. That we'll say yes, Lord. To your wills, to your ways, we'll say yes, Lord. That we'll truly surrender all. That we'll truly live in the day, not make provisions for ourselves in the night. Father, we just thank you. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.